When you receive your Teslong NTG450 borescope, it will come in one of two variations, either a flexible model or a rigid model. The boxes look different, but they work the same and include the same accessories. After opening the box, you'll see the camera probe, the monitor, several cables, and a few accessories. The cables include the aviation to USB-C cable to connect the probe to the monitor. The aviation to USB-A cable is included to connect the probe to a Windows, Apple, or Chromebook computer. The USB-A to C cable is for downloading content and charging the monitor. There should also be a monitor stand, as well as a pack of five mirrors. We'll start off by going over the monitor. On the front, you'll find the buttons for Power, Settings, Enter, Mode, Lights, Photo or Video, and Up and Down. On the back, you'll find the probe lock, the speaker, the stand mount, and the reset button. On the bottom, you'll find a rubber door, and behind that, the USB-C charge port, the micro SD card slot, and the microphone. Now we'll install the borescope. First, we thread the aviation to USB-C cable onto the probe. On top of the monitor, you'll find the probe port. Now, we'll take the probe and plug it in. When you hear the click, you'll know it's locked. Note, if you want to remove the probe, you have to press the silver button on the back of the monitor when you pull the probe out to release it. If you haven't already, remove the protective tip from the probe. The device should start with a long press of the power button, followed by the screen logo, and the ring light on the probe should turn on. You'll see some icons on the screen, including the SD card indicator and battery level in the upper right corner, the date and time stamp in the lower right corner, and in the upper left corner, you'll see the photo or video mode indicator. If the battery indicator is low, you should charge the device before using it. To change from photo to video mode, just press the mode button to switch. The third mode is playback to view the photos and video that you've taken. Next, check your light button to make sure you can toggle through three light levels as well as turn the light off to adjust your illumination. These probes are just under 20 caliber in size to fit easily in a 22 caliber barrel. If we want to look sideways at the lands and grooves or a gas port, we need to install a mirror. Pay close attention to the small lock ring on the threads. This is to lock your mirror in place. This probe has a fixed focal distance of about 10 millimeters, but the threaded mirror is used to adjust the focus looking sideways. If you're in a small barrel, like a 22, you'll position the mirror farther away from the lens. If you're inspecting a larger caliber barrel, then you'll have to move the mirror closer to the lens to achieve sharp focus. Use the lock ring to lock your mirror in place when you get a sharp picture. Using the caliber-specific mirrors works similarly. The larger the size, the closer they'll need to be positioned to the camera lens. However, the mirrors have a larger surface area, so you'll see more when you look in a bigger mirror. Now, we'll insert the probe into a barrel and capture some photos and video. Remember to press the mode button to switch from capturing photos to video. You can see the timecode start when you're recording video. Now that we have some photos and video captured, you can view these files on your monitor in playback mode. But if you want to move the files to your computer, there are two ways to do this. The first method is to plug your monitor into your computer with the included USB-A to C cable and find the drive in your finder window. Note, the monitor needs to be turned on to see the files on the computer. If you don't turn it on, all you'll do is charge the monitor's batteries. Navigate to the DCIM folder, and you'll see the photos and video from the device stored there and can drag and drop them onto your computer. Another option for removing the files is to remove the micro SD card and insert it into a card reader and pull the files out of the DCIM folder. If you want to adjust the settings on your device, click the Settings button to see the changes that can be made to the resolution, date stamp, and audio. Click Settings again to go to the second menu page with adjustments for the Auto Power Off, Language, Date Time, Format, Default Settings Reset, and the version information. Finally, to get the best image quality from your borescope, 
Clean the camera lens and mirrors before and after each use with a soft microfiber cloth and a cotton swab. For stubborn stains, you can use warm water or rubbing alcohol, but don't use stronger solvents. The screen and monitor case can also be wiped down to clean away dust and fingerprints with a microfiber cloth and a few drops of warm water or rubbing alcohol. That covers everything you need to know to use a Teslong NTG 450 bore scope. If you still have more questions or are experiencing any issues with your product, please contact us via email, online chat on our website, or call us on the number shown on the screen. And thank you for purchasing your product from Teslong.